Hello everyone and welcome to this fantastic tutorial for Cinema 4D. My name is Moises Perez aka Moilovito and I am very glad to have you here. In this tutorial we are going to create an exterior scene in Cinema 4D. We are going to be working on the modeling, UV mapping, texturing, lighting, rendering and some post-production in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. I have to say that this is not a beginner's tutorial. The techniques that we are going to learn are focused on the creation on an exterior scene, but I assume that you know already the basics of 3D modeling, lighting and texturing. The tools that we are going to be using for this tutorial are Maxon Cinema 4D, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. You can follow this tutorial with basically any version of these applications. You can even follow the tutorial with a different application, like Pixelmator instead of Adobe Photoshop, or Maya or 3D Studio Max instead of Cinema 4D. The important thing are the techniques that we are going to learn. So let's begin. Before getting into the modeling, I am going to tell you about a website where you can download lots of textures for free. This website is called cgtextures.com. Here you can see that they have lots of textures to choose from, and they are organized in different categories. For this tutorial we are going to use lots of bricks, concrete, some of the decals, doors, and some floors and windows. But let's get inside bricks just to show you a quick example. So inside this category called bricks, there are some subcategories like blocks, cinder blocks, and other different categories. Let's get inside of blocks. Here we have uh, some textures that we can download for free. Let's choose this one just to show you. Okay, so here we can see that it says that we need to be logged in in order to download uh, the texture that we want. So let's get back to our main page and let's log in. Or if you don't have an account, just make a free account. You don't have to pay nothing for this. So that's good. Once we are logged in, we can refresh. And here we have it. If you pay for a membership on this site, you will have access to some extras. But if you have a free account like the one that I have, you will have some limitations. The first limitation that I'm going to tell you about is that you can download only 15 megabytes every day if you have a free account. And here you can see that <clears throat> there's a countdown on how many megabytes I still have for these 24 hours. And here you can see the image and you can see the different sizes that you can download this texture. For free accounts, you cannot download the bigger size. But you can download this size, which is 124 uh, horizontally. And you can see how, how big it is. And depending on uh, how big it is, that's how many megabytes uh, that are going to be uh, left after you download this this image. Let's make a quick test to see how it works. So let's download this size which is uh, 3.6 megabytes. We just have to click there and click enter. Once the download is finished we are going to refresh the site so we can see the difference. So here we can see that we are going to have only 12 megabytes left 
after this download. And this is the way it works. So the reason that I'm telling you about this website at the very beginning of the tutorial is for you to start downloading your textures. So when we get to the texturing part, you are going to have all the textures that you need. And here you can see some of the textures that I'm going to be using. I am not going to be using all of these textures, but here you can see what kind of textures you have to download. Try to download some bricks and some uh, damaged, damaged walls, something like this, which is what we are going to be using for the texturing part of the tutorial. So that is pretty much it for this website. And it is cgtextures.com. And as I said before, you can download many textures for free. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to be patient and try to download uh, the textures from the very beginning of the tutorial. So when we get to the texturing part, you have all of the textures that you need. Hi guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on getting the reference images that we need to create our scene. I have chosen the three best ways to get our references. Number one, the internet. The internet is full of pictures, sketches, drawings, and even paintings of buildings, homes, and basically anything you can imagine. So all you have to do is Use a search engine like Google or Yahoo and gather as many references as you need. Number two, take your own pictures, especially if you are working on a project that requires a specific building or any other element that you can have personal access to. So all you have to do is take your camera, go to the location and start shooting. I recommend that you take as many pictures as you can. Take open shots close shots, take the same objects from different angles, and don't forget to take some shots of any detail that you can later model or texture. And always remember that those little details are the ones that give realism to your renders. In this category, we will also include the projects where your clients give you the references themselves. If this is the case, ask them to give you the pictures in the same way I described before. And finally, number three use Google Earth. In my opinion, this is the most exciting one. Okay, so this is Google Earth. This is the interface. And I think most of us know this great application, but I am going to tell you how we can use this application for our modeling, especially to gather some references for uh, buildings and other kinds of, of things. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you about is this panel at the bottom of the application which is called the tour guide and basically what it does is depending on which uh, part of the planet you are looking at it is going to take some recommendations and put them in this area over here so you can see uh, where you can go for example here you can see uh, san diego Texas, Mexico, and other places. So if you go to a different area over here, for example, you can see that now it is giving us uh, different recommendations like Nigeria and Egypt and uh, some other recommendations. So I went ahead and and uh, tag Venice in Italy. So let's just uh, double click this. So it, it is going to take us to to that place. Okay. So here we are now. And this little toy over here 
is what is going to help us a lot. So you must know it. I know you know it. But anyways, let's just take it and drop it to any of the blue lines. Okay, let's um, drop it over here. Okay, great. Now we can uh, hide this tour guide over here, and we can hide this other panel. So we have just this uh, big screen, and you can see that we can just uh, navigate uh, all over the place. And this is great uh, for us to get some uh, references for our projects. For example, if we want to model a building, uh, we can take some references over here. And the cool thing is that we can see this uh, object from different angles. It's, it is not just like one picture, it's uh, different. We can rotate and we can zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so this is another example of how we can use this application. And let's say that we are going to model this balcony over here. If we had a normal picture, we wouldn't know how far or how deep this balcony is if the picture is taken from the front view. So now we can just move around and see how deep it is. We can We can see this balcony from different angles, from the bottom, and we can see lots of details. And this is just a way that we can use this application to help us uh, have better references for different uh, buildings that we are not uh, close by and that we don't have access to. So this is a good option. and. This is the option that we are going to be using in this tutorial. Okay, so this is the building that we are going to be modeling, the first building. And as you can see, we still are in Google Earth, so we can see around just to show you uh, some of the other buildings that we can take as reference. But uh, for the first building, we are going to be using this one. So let's just uh, close the sidebar and start um, placing the, the view so we have a, a better view. So basically what we want to do is to make sure that the whole building fits on the screen because what we are going to do is uh, copy this image like so, like a screen capture or a print screen if you are using Windows. And we are going to go to Photoshop and make a new document and just paste the picture that we copied. And I'm going to start by placing some guides to have as reference for the floor and the top of the buildings and as well to the sides of the buildings because you can see that the perspective of this building is not right at this moment so we are going to fix that so let's start by renaming this layer and let's name it something like building 01 and after that we are going to duplicate this layer so uh, later we can see the before and the after the manipulation and let's uh, rename this layer as well let's uh, name it uh, perspective correction and something like that so now, now we have to go to the uh, menu to edit and free transform and Pressing the command key, we are going to uh, go to one of the corners 
and we are going to drag to the side and on the left we are going to do the same thing we are going to drag to the side and always keep in mind that our goal here is to correct the perspective and uh, placing new guides will always help to see uh, where the different parts of the building should be aligned and let's see the floor it has to be on that line and it looks like it is it is okay so let's just move it a little bit so it it, it looks better and let's place another guide to help us see where that top of the middle part of the building should be and let's place another one so we can align the different windows and basically this is the process that we are going to be repeating until we have this building in the right perspective and as you can see part of this process is to select the active layer that we are working on and select the area that we can see on the canvas and after that selection we're going to go to the menu and go to layer new and select layer via copy and what this does is makes a new layer from the selected pixels that we have and it helped us because uh, the other layers had some pixels that uh, were not inside of the canvas and when we use the transform tool those pixels were affecting the selection and that would make uh, harder for us to make these uh, modifications to the perspective so that is a good way to get rid of this problem to make a selection and just make a new layer from that selection and there's a shortcut as well for for that it is command j or control j depending on the platform that you are using and we are going to be using these guides to let us know when uh, the building is is right so when the perspective is right what we are going to be doing is to select the marquee tool and make selections on the areas that we don't need like uh, parts of the other buildings and parts of the floor and also the sky so that's what uh, we have to do and we can also use the lasso tool to uh, complete this this task so when that is finished we're just going to stay with two uh, guides which are going to be one horizontal and one vertical and that is just to check that the building is aligned properly so the last thing that we are going to do is to create a different background color so we select the background layer and go to the menu image adjustments and hue and saturation and we are going to check the colorize option and we are going to reduce the likeness and change uh, the hue and the saturation to a color that we like after that is done we are just going to save this picture and this is the picture that we are going to be using as the background picture in Cinema 4D and it's going to be the guide for our first building so let's go to file and from all of the options we are going to choose the option save for web and in here we can see the preview of the image that we are about to save and we are just going to click on save and we're going to just uh, select the uh, location where we want to save and let's name it something like building 01 reference image 
And now in the desktop, we are going to be creating our project. So let's make a new folder and let's name it exterior scene in Cinema 4D. And inside this new folder, we're going to place the reference image that we just made. And inside, uh, we are going to create some other uh, folders. One is going to be called TEX for the textures. The second one is going to be called renders. And the third one is going to be called C4D backups. So inside the GEX folder, we are going to place the reference image that we created in Photoshop. And let's go to Cinema 4D. And here we are going to change the layout from the standard to modeling. So now in this uh, new layout, we have better access to the different tools. That we are going to be using. So let's save the file. So let's go to file, save, and let's save it inside of the folder that we created. And let's name it exterior scene and just save. So as you can see now, uh, we are working on the exterior scene file. And let's go to this panel and go to mode and view settings and here is where we are going to place the image that we created so let's go to back as you can see the panel is mostly grayed out because it's not working on the perspective view so we have to go to a different view for this to work and the view that we are going to be using is the front view so selecting the front view now we can see the difference if it is on the perspective view we cannot use any of the options so let's select the front view and load the image that we created which is in inside of the text folder so now let's make a cube and as you can see now the, the picture uh, that we loaded is in the background and this is the picture that we are going to be using as a reference to model our building. So let's uh, select the cube and let's zoom in a little bit to see a little bit better. And now we are going to increase the size of the cube. So let's go to the Y, X and let's change that to 300. And that is going to be the size of the first floor. And now we can go to the mode in here and go to the view settings and on the back tab we can see that we can change the transparency for that picture that we have in the background and we can change also the size of that picture and that's what we are going to be doing here let's uh, change the size so this first floor is the same size as the cube that we made and we are using the metric system here which is 300 centimeters that is equal to 3 meters but if you are using the English system that would be about 10 feet for the height of the cube and now we have the first floor set which is 3 meters and the rest of the image is also set so we are good now. We can continue with the modeling. And we are going to rename the cube 
and let's name it something simple like building 01 and now we are going to go ahead and move this cube to the left and we are going to make this an editable object just click there and now we can access the different modes so we are going to go to the point mode and we are going to use the select tool to select the different points always keep in mind that depending on the settings of this selection tool uh, that is the way that this tool is going to be working so we have to deselect the only select visible elements option so now when we select from the front view all of the elements that are behind are going to be selected as well and let's go to the display mode and select the second option and now let's select the uh, the building 01 and click on the x-ray option and let's change also the display mode on the other views now on the front view we're going to take those points on the top and just move them so they match the image that we have in the background and we are also going to be moving the other points so this cube is the same size as the building that we have in the background something like that that is going to be working so let's go to the top view and move these other points and let's uh, reposition first the whole building and move the other points on the ZX let's just move them a little bit so this building doesn't look too thin and something like that should work don't, don't worry too much about that and let's go to the front view and we are going to duplicate this building 01 so let's just Control c and Control v and just change the name to building 02 and let's select the whole thing and let's position it and now let's go to the point mode and we are going to be doing basically the same thing reposition the point to a place where they are the same size as the image that we have in the background and for the last building we are going to just copy and paste again and let's just rename it to building 03 and let's move it to the right and on the point mode we are going to be just doing the same thing so let's just make sure that this building here matches the picture that we have in the background so let's just move this point something like that would work and let's go to the top view because we still need to work on the second building and here in Google Earth we can see that this building is not complete we still have to do the fourth floor so now let's select the knife tool and we are going to be cutting this cube so we can extrude the other part of the building the fourth floor so let's go and change the mode to loop instead of linear and now uh, we are going to cut so let's change to the perspective view and we can see now this object and we are going to extrude so let's go to the polygon mode and select this object but first we have to change the settings for the selection tool so let's only check the only select visible elements 
because we only want to select that uh, that polygon. With the extrude tool, we are going to extrude and change to the front view and move that polygon to the top of the building. And now let's go to the perspective view to see how these elements are working. So we can see that we have the base of the buildings. And on the next lesson, we are going to be refining these objects and we are going to be making room for the doors and windows. And we are going to be working on some other details to complete these buildings. We still have lots of things to learn, so I will see you on the next lesson.